ready to drop the hammer, or in this case, the mallet. Here's a look at the new DC Collectibles, DC Essentials, figure number 13, Harley Quinn. She's athletic, intelligent, and quick with a joke. Her loyalty to her loved ones is the stuff of legends. She's definitely the kind of gal you'd want to be friends with, except for the whole mallet-happy super villain who hangs out with the Joker thing. Modeled in her classic Batman the Animated Series design, this 7-inch tall figure, featuring over 20 points of articulation, is the most poseable Harley Quinn figure DC Collectibles has ever released. Very first thing we'll do for Harley Quinn is to measure off how tall the DC Essentials Harley Quinn stands. So we're going to take the tape measure and we're going to stop it right to the very top of her head. That's as good a place as any. You're looking at a figure that stands 6.5 inches in height or in centimeters. Let me go ahead and do that right now because the mob does get angry if I don't show off the centimeter height. So you're looking at 16.7 centimeters tall. And most definitely, I would be not doing any service to Harley Quinn if I didn't display her or size comparison wise her to Mr. J. There's Joker right next to her. It's so funny that I would say that the figure had no time, no tough time standing, and yet Joker for some strange reason. Of course, because as the camera is rolling right now, Joker's giving me some bit of a difficulty, but there is nonetheless Harley Quinn to the right. You can probably clearly see that. And to the left is Joker, who stands a little bit taller. Dang, I still love that Joker. All right, so having a look at her accessories, dang. Having a look at her accessories, she comes included with her trusty mallet. As you can see, they've put the Harley Quinn motif there on the side. Sort of a weathered paint job there. It's supposed to look like it's aged and she's had it for a while. Mission accomplished. DC Collectibles, they've also added a little bit of a dark wash to the head portion of the mallet. It does sort of get the vibe across that it looks like it's made out of wood instead and kind of also just looks a little bit like they've just taken a wet wash, put it on the handle, put it also on the head. But again, it accomplishes the goal it needs to be. Both the ends of the mallet head are a different color than the rest of the mallet. Again, decent enough looking representation of the mallet. It's a slightly more thinner handle than some of the mallets we've also seen before. She does also hold it very well in her hand. We'll talk about that in a second. She also comes with her overly large uh, cap pellet gun. Of course, no, no bang, no, uh, you know, nothing on the end of it. There are no cork or anything like that. I'm pretty sure if she's pointing this right at you, you want to be moving out of the way. A small handle, like I said, overly large barrel of the gun, painted the handle only. Uh, the rest of it is done just in a, just kind of in a uh, a silver color. It's interesting though that if you'll even look at it here, both colors of the handle are different from one another. Both sides, one is red, and in in vein of uh, the Harley Quinn colors, the other one also is in black. So I like that little small touch, a little something that you almost just don't even notice right away until you're like, oh yeah. There's two different colors to the handle. As I talked about already, uh, you can hold either one of the accessories in her hands. It sort of does tell you though, this one hand does have the extended out trigger hand, trigger finger. Kind of gives you the indicator though, that really, even though you can hold them in either one of, either one of her accessories can be held in her hands. Really ideally, the cap gun, uh, the larger barreled gun, Suits so really better to have with the pistol, uh, the trigger around the, the, the trigger, finger I should say, around the trigger, even though it really doesn't fit completely around. I suppose you could heat this out a little bit more, but it doesn't really quite clear to the point where it fits itself around the trigger. Ah, uh, there we go. Just stretched the finger a little bit more so. And there you go right there. The mallet on the other hand, on literally on the other hand, plugs into her hand and you get this one section of her finger that sticks a little bit further inward, so you just want to pry that. Thumb is always the issue as well. The thumbs do get out of the way. You, I find it's just actually easier if you slide the mallet through and then fit that in place. It's sort of awkward to have both the accessories in her hand. You may want to do one over the other, uh, or what I could also do too is just display the figure with the mallet just kind of on the side of her 
and then put the cap gun. Oh, sorry. There we go. Just put the cap gun in her hand like that. And you can see even like the way that the hand is sized, it fits perfectly around even like the end of the mallet handle. So, you know, again, that's a workaround that you could do to it as well. Okay, so we'll put the accessories to the side. Uh, I'm sort of of mixed opinions, in all honesty, when it comes to this particular figure. There's some things I like, and then there's other things I really don't. Where I had sort of debating topics in my own mind when I was looking first at Joker, and then finally settling on several, several hours later, settling on the decision that I was really happy with the mold, but it was sort of jarring when I first got him out. In all honesty, I sort of feel like I'm still not settled on the idea if I actually like this figure. From the side, it doesn't look so bad. The hardest part is often at times you're never really going to display the figure from the side anyways. You're going to be displaying her from the front. There's something really off on her face. I've been trying my best to pinpoint what exactly is the case. One of which, probably the big obvious ones, is something's wrong with this eye here. I thought maybe it's actually inverted. Because if you look at it, the eyelashes are appearing to be on the bottom, which is, I guess, not necessarily the case because there's eyelashes here on the bottom as well. But the way that this is cut, this section right here, it looks like she's crazy. And I guess that would be an understatement. Harley Quinn is bat, you know what, crazy. But there's something really that just seems off-putting about her eyes. I've dated people that look like this, really just knew right away something was something was off crazy about them anyways that's for another story this like I said this one side isn't terrible at the very least I could say her nose is maybe a little bit too big but I'm not gonna be I want to dissect people's anatomy features but certainly when it comes down to figures you really want figures like if this is essentials you would think at the very least this would be like a definitive Harley Quinn and everything else sort of feels like that except for the head the one place where you would want a really good head sculpt. I like the fact that her mouth is open. You don't see that often with Harley Quinn's. Usually the mouth is closed or she's smiling, but here you have a outright laughter being captured here in plastic. I feel like, again, like the nose maybe might be a little bit too big, but I think the one thing that's killing this for this figure is that one eye right there. I don't know if it's upside down. It almost seems like that eye should be over here, but then that eye wouldn't be over here something is off on that eye right there it's gonna be all you're gonna be looking at right now paint is pretty good though it's got the airbrushing there of the warmer cheek areas I probably would not have put as much on there toned it down a bit I don't really ever envision Harley Quinn to have like shading around her face if she's really wearing white makeup you know if that for me, that doesn't make much sense. But at the very least, if you wanted to put a little in, a little in, not right across the entire, because it seems like she's got it across her nose as well. You know it's a figure that is, is plagued when you're trying to find the proper angle to make her look good. Even like that side doesn't look terrible. It's only, like that side's not bad. That side's not bad. In fact, actually that side might even be better but it's when you put the two together, it's like happy Harrison Ford, angry Harrison Ford. That's a, if anybody has ever seen that meme. That side I think is my favorite side of Harley Quinn. If only they could have copied that, put it on this side, the two really just don't line up. When you get the figure out of packaging, one unique thing about it is that she has, even though I've taken it off already, plastic wrap wrapped around her collar. Somebody who's just now picked up this figure is like, oh, I didn't realize. You're right. You're right. There is plastic wrap there. Yeah, so you can actually just take the collar off, take the plastic wrap all off, and then just revisit everything you just everything you just left, backtrack, work your way back. Um, it also seems like her neck isn't long enough, but I think what's killing it, though, is that the collar, the, the you know, of course, the collar around the top of her outfit sticks a little further up. I would have cut that a little lower, maybe just so that her neck seemed, didn't seem like the neck got lost in the mix of it. I don't know, proportionally, maybe like the torso seems off. I could imagine that this is probably going to be the go-to torso for all the superhero figures. Unfortunately, the problem is, 
I think the way that they've designed, if this is like the go-to mold for female figures moving forward in the DC Essentials lineup, this would work well. This These proportions, I think, would work well for Wonder Woman. But throws off, especially the torso area here, throws off, I think, Harley Quinn. It makes her look a little fuller than I probably would have made her. Again, I'll be overly critical, maybe. Of course, you've got the alternating colors of the red on the top, the red on the bottom, and then alternating black from there. The Harlequin motif also carried over in the diamonds also on her legs and in her arms, and then an alternating red color there on the black. The white is pretty clean. Normally, white would be a problematic color on any figure, because if it's not fully finished, you can see sort of the colors bleeding through. Here in the collars of the sleeves, and of course the collar around the top of her torso, uh, all of which are done with a suited amount of, of white paint. Nothing gets missed, nothing gets overlooked. I don't know if I may be asking for much, but I would have loved to see that the pom-poms would have been also posable if I could have maybe hinged these out. Uh, try as I might, there is just something off-putting about this figure, and I'm really trying my best to figure out what exactly it is. Because like I said, this side looks good. I know, we've done this already. That side looks good. Together, forever, something's missing. I don't know. Something, something seems off. As we move further down on her feet, she's like, that's really small shoes. Get a load of this guy, just finding fault with everything. I would like to hope, as a reviewer here on the interweb and on YouTube specifically, um, these, of course, are only my own opinions, and that's the beauty of opinions. Everybody has their own. I personally find that the feet are way too small. It looks like she's got really small feet. Proportionally, I don't think the feet match the size and stature of this figure. I feel like the feet should be a little bit bigger. Again, that's just me. One thing that's great about these new DC Essentials figures is so far, based on the two that I've looked at, both the Joker and the Harley Quinn have peg holes on the undersides of his feet, of their feet. Hurrah, I say aloud, because if you want to make use of a display stand, you can finally do so. And it also will help get the figure to be stable, to stand upright, to not fall over, which has always been the problems that I've had with a lot of these Essential figures. They just didn't want to stand. So it's nice that DC... Uh, comics are looking at these things. DC collectibles are really listening to the fans. And when we have said, put peg holes in there out loud, they've gone in there and put peg holes for crying out loud. Let's have a look at her posability. Her head rotates, whoops, her head rotates all the way around. Let me just put that back on her. I guess I didn't get it on there completely. As I was saying, her head rotates all the way around. It does seem to pop off a little here and there. Hinges up and down. Uh, the shoulders hinge outward, no restrictions there. The arms rotate all the way around. You can swivel at the bicep. I find this elbow, this bicep here, this one's not so bad. This one's a little on the loose side. That will vary from figure to figure, of course. She's got a double hinge on the elbow. And uh, she also rotates at the wrist, hinges back and forth. Upper torso ball joint, legs split, forward and back. She has a swivel, about three quarters of a cut of a swivel in her thigh. That swivels all the way around. Double hinge on the knee. Uh, it almost looks like... A, it's weird that they would put a swivel right there. That doesn't seem to be logical to me. I can understand maybe if that was the top of a figure's boot. Maybe that's what they're planning on doing with future figures. It doesn't really make much sense to me why she should swivel there when you've already got a swivel point right there on the thigh. I would imagine that does just as much as putting a swivel cut right there. I don't really see why that has to be the case. The feet hinge back and forth. Um, there is no ankle rocker, unfortunately, for this Harley Quinn. So, I mean, really, the packaging is correct. Clearly, this would be the most posable Harley Quinn that we have gotten from DC Collectibles. The question, though, really boils down to, is this the best Harley Quinn figure that we've gotten from DC Collectibles? And in all honesty, I might even say no. Yeah, unfortunately, when it comes to Harley Quinn, while the sum of her parts are pretty good, the one stumbling point of all things, the one thing that it would need to be, the one stumbling point is her head sculpt. Two halves make a whole, but in all honesty, both the halves, the sides of her face, work well on their own, independently. But when you bring those heads together, those two halves together, it brings together a really crazy, off-putting head sculpt. 
In all honesty, while she does have the best articulation for a figure that we've gotten from DC Collectibles, I still think one of the best head sculpts in all honesty was still the Batman Hush, back in when DC Collectibles was still DC Direct. I really like that head sculpt. I kind of wish that they could have mimicked something here for what you would consider to be a definitive Harley Quinn. Joker took chances, and I think successful chances. My takeaway for the Joker figure is while it was off-putting initially, I really have grown to love that figure. I wonder if I'll feel the same when it comes to Harley Quinn. You know, the moment I still continue to look at this figure. Again, if you have her in the right pose, like right there, freeze that in your head. Right there, she looked fine. And as she comes around here in final looks, the other side of her face, right there, looks fine. But again, when you put those two halves together, there's something crazy and off-putting about her face sculpt. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I know there's something that I'm not liking about the head sculpt. And the sad part is, I really wanted to like this figure. If you've seen this figure online, or even in this review, or if you've picked up this figure for yourself, let me know down below in the comment section what you think of the head sculpt. Do you think there's something off on the face? Right there, there, right there. There's where the head sculpt looks good. I will keep doing that. But let me know down below, guys, what you think of the Harley Quinn head sculpt. Is there something off? Something doesn't quite jive when you look at her straight on? Because, I mean, from the sides, she doesn't look so much bad, so that much bad at all. Let me know down below, guys. Always like reading your comments and always like to have discussions with you, the viewing audience. In the meantime, though, today we were having a look at the DC Collectibles, DC Essentials. And this was, I believe, figure 13. Yes, figure 13. This was Harley Quinn. A fitting number, by the way, for a crazy looking Harley Quinn. Also, if you haven't had a chance, why not go back and have a look at my Joker review or one better. There's also a playlist just for DC Essentials. So if you want to go back and have a look at all the things I've reviewed up to this point, you should be able to find them all in the DC Essentials playlist. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos will be coming your way. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.